Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And today I'm excited to share some simply stamped card projects featuring our brand new Autumn Splendor card kit. I'm going to be focusing on the layered leaf print stamp set and I'm going to be sharing some interesting color combinations along with a few tips and tricks on how to create your own backgrounds and making them look like you would find them in printed pattern papers. This stamp set is perfect for year-round masculine cards because leaves are always in fashion. The layered leaf print stamp set is a large 6x8 stamp set. And these layers go together very easily because it's not important that they line up perfectly to look really cool. You can see that there are two different types of leaf prints for each design. One has a stem and one is just a little bit more rough looking and that just layers on top. It's also got a large forever greeting and lots of strip sentiments that work with it. For the colors for my first project, I'm using soft stone, sweet corn, some apple mint, some charcoal brown, and I'm using an ocean mist ink cube. To begin, I'm going to use the large maple leaf. And this one is perfect for your first image that you're going to put down on your pattern paper that you're going to create. The color I'm going to be using is apple mint. And here is the way I like to stamp my first image when I'm creating my own background paper. I always start with one image right in the center of the piece of cardstock. Then my next four images are going to come in from the four corners. And I'm going to turn the stamp each time I stamp so the pattern isn't all going in the same direction and it looks more random, kind of like the leaves are just falling onto the paper. So you can see I've turned each of those in a different direction and you can see how rugged and spotty this stamp really is and I just love that. It's such a different leaf than anything we've done before. These leaves are also great for doing home decor pieces. You can even stamp these on coasters and make beautiful gifts. So now I'm going to add one on each little side, but just a little piece of it. So I'm going to stamp, I'm going to ink up the stamp just a little bit here on the top. And then I'm going to use just a tiny bit of the stamp so that it comes in off the side. You always want to make sure your stamps somewhere are going off the paper because that's how patterned paper looks. If you keep everything in with a white border, it doesn't look as realistic as a patterned paper. My next image is going to be this leaf up at the top here, and this is the more solid of the two. And I'm going to stamp this one with some ocean mist. Now I'm only going to stamp a few of these. And I'm going to start kind of in some areas where there's some white space, but definitely overlapping the maple leaves. So you can see I stamped that one there, and now I'm going to go the opposite side, and I'm going to stamp another one. But again, I'm turning my stamp in a different direction so it doesn't look so patterned and it looks much more random. I'm going to put one in this empty space right down here. And again, I'm turning it so it's in a different direction. So now I'm going to add my next image. And that image is going to be this small leaf down at the bottom. And this one I'm going to do in the soft stone. And you can see I'm sticking with all cooler colors to start my pattern here. But then I'm going to add one warm color right at the end. So I'm finding all the empty spots now, and I'm randomly stamping this soft stone leaf into those spots. And you can see how beautiful and non-traditional this color palette is. It's such a nice way to do autumn cards in non-traditional colors. So I have those three, and now I'm going to kind of overlap a little bit and not fully stamp the leaves, have them go off the cardstock just a little bit in some different areas where there's some empty spaces. Now my final leaf, I'm going to use this pine leaf, 
And this one I'm going to do in a warm tone. I'm going to use sweet corn for this one. This image can be a little bit bold, so by using a very, very light color, it won't muddy up the other colors, but it'll definitely add a little bit into this piece. So I'm going to, again, overlap and just find some white spots where I think it could use a little bit more. And you can see I'm bringing some of them in off the side. And don't worry about overlapping too much. When you're using a super light color like this, it really won't affect anything and it's going to look very pretty and very finished. So just a little bit more here and one more in this corner. And that piece of patterned background paper is complete. So now my next step is going to be to add the embossing magic pad because I'm going to do a little bit of embossing over this piece. Now I'm going to put this into my Misty stamping tool and I'm going to use that large forever greeting. And I'm going to stamp this one in embossing and watermark ink. First, I'm going to figure out exactly where I want to lay it out. And because this is such a big, bold greeting, I'm going to put it up a little bit higher and it's almost going to be like my focal image. So I'm going to place it there, pick it up with the door of the Misty, and then I'm going to use the Gina K Designs embossing and watermark ink to ink this stamp up. This is a great ink pad to use for embossing, but you can also use it to leave a watermark on your colored cardstock, and you can use it for other powder techniques like Pearlex and Perfect Pearls to create a shiny image onto your cardstock. So I'm inking that up real well with the, with the Gina K Designs watermark and embossing ink. And then I am going to use our fine detail gold powder. So I'm heating this up with my Wagner heat tool. You can see I have that powder on there. And you can see how beautiful that fine detail gold coordinates with that sweet corn ink. That just pulls it all together. And now I'm going to add one of the strip sentiments to this card to complete the card project. Now once in a while when you emboss, your cardstock can get a little bit curled. And if that happens, you can just put an acrylic block on it to hold it down while you're adding another stamped image. That just kind of flattens it out a little bit. So I'm going to use the Grateful Strip Sentiment, but I'm not gonna cut it out as a strip. I'm just going to stamp it right onto my card. Whenever you have a strip sentiment, you can lay it face down on your work surface and then pick it up with an acrylic block. This way you won't distort it at all when you're trying to put it onto the block and you know it's going to be straight. I'm going to ink that up with some charcoal brown ink and then I'm going to stamp it right under my forever greeting. So here is a perfect card for Thanksgiving and any fall project anytime you want to send a thank you card, forever grateful. I don't send a lot of Thanksgiving cards, but I do like to send thank you cards to let people know that I'm grateful for them during the Thanksgiving season. So I've mounted that onto a piece of charcoal brown cardstock, and then I'm mounting it onto a piece of prickly pear cardstock that I have folded into a note card. And that completes my card project, and you can see that nice shine from the embossing powder, and it's all ready to send. For my second card project, I'm going to use the second layer of all of these leaves. And these are a little bit more spotty, and they, can, they actually create quite a different look. So I'm going to start with the spottier version of the maple leaf, and again, I'm going to start in the center. Now the color I'm going to use is some craft ink, and this coordinates beautifully with our craft cardstock. And again, I'm starting right in the middle, and I'm going to stamp that one. You can see how different that looks than the original leaf that I did in the first card. And now I'm going to once again stamp the four corners, turning the leaf as I stamp each image. 
and I always like to start my pattern paper this way. This creates a very balanced look on the cardstock. It also pulls the images off the edge and it leaves even open space for my next series of images. For my next stamp, I'm going to use the spottier version of that second stamp that we used in our last card. And this time, I'm going to use the color Peach Bellini. Now, Peach Bellini is a very vibrant peach color, and it's beautiful for autumn cards. And it might be a little unexpected because most of the time we stick to deeper, darker colors, but this is a beautiful warm color and it really adds a pop of brightness to this card. I'm going to put these images into those four open white spaces. And you can see once again, I'm turning the stamps each time I stamp so that the image doesn't look too perfectly patterned. And then I'm going to add one on each corner, just on those two corners, the opposite corners just to give a little bit of pop of color going toward the outside of this cardstock. My next color is going to be the soft stone again, and I'm using the smallest of the leaves. And now I'm going to stamp these overlapping, and you can see how spotty this image is. So it doesn't really create too much darkness onto the card but it's such a nice color when coordinated and mixed with the peach bellini and also those warm tones. It gives it just a little bit of interest. So I love the way they look together. And I'm kind of bringing this in on the corner here and again up at that top corner. So I have color going off of all of the corners. And you can bring a little bit into some empty spaces as you see fit. I'm just trying to keep that balance. So my next stamp is going to be the spottier image of that pine leaf, that pine sprig, I should say. And this one I'm going to do with sandy beach. So this is one of the lightest dye ink colors that we carry. And I really love this color for this image. It creates just a shadow in the background, but it fills in those remaining white spaces perfectly. And it doesn't hinder any of the other colors, but it coordinates beautifully with the craft. So you can see I'm just randomly filling in those white spaces. And then once that's done, this piece of pattern paper will be ready for a greeting. Now I'm going to use my embossing magic pad all over the surface once again. And you want to make sure that you do that. Even though these dye inks dry very quickly, you want to make sure that it's completely dry. And by adding the embossing magic, you can be sure that that's going to absorb any moisture. So again, I'm going to use the forever stamp and I'm going to place that down in this corner. So this is just a horizontal version of that last card that I made in the vertical orientation. For this, I'm going to use some charcoal brown ink and I'm going to ink up my forever stamp. I love charcoal brown. It is a great brown color for greetings when you're doing a more warm look and you don't want to use black, but you want it to be very dark. This is a perfect option. So I'm going to clean the stamp, but I'm going to leave it on the Misty because now I'm going to use some Versamark ink. And of course you can use the Gina K Designs embossing and watermark ink for this as well. But I wanted to show you that Versamark works well too. So if you already have that, you certainly can use that for this technique. So I'm inking up the forever stamp again, and I'm going to stamp right over that charcoal brown. And now I'm going to use a little bit of clear embossing powder. And this is the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Clear Powder. This is a great way to have embossing powder in any color you want by stamping the dye ink color first and then clear on top. 
This way you have no speckling of any color and you have as many colors in your collection as you have dye ink pad colors. So that's a lot of colors. And you can see now I have a gray hazy look, but as I heat it with my heat tool, it shines up in that clear on top and it makes it look like I have charcoal brown embossing powder. So now this piece of cardstock needs a greeting. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this onto my charcoal brown panel first. And that just makes it lay nice and flat so I don't have to use the acrylic block this time. I'm going to use the strip sentiment that says best friends. And this is going to be a friendship card that will say best friends forever. I'm going to again use the charcoal brown on top and I'm going to stamp that right on top of that forever greeting. And that creates a great friendship card that's appropriate for any time of the year. Now I'm going to add that to the white note card and then I want to show you one that I did earlier using the more solid images of the leaf prints. So you can see the difference between the spottier version and the solid version. For my greeting I used some faded brick ink. So those are two different versions of the same style card. And I'd love to know in the comments below which color greeting you like the best. So here's a couple other cards I made using the layered leaf prints. This color combination is Wild Wisteria, Ocean Mist, Lovely Lavender, and Soft Stone. And then I used one of the greetings from Emily's new set called Happy Fall. I just love how bright and colorful this combination is. And I did the embossing powder technique on that too, so that greeting is nice and shiny. For this final card, I used more traditional colors, more traditional autumn colors. I used prickly pear, honey mustard, faded brick, and some craft ink. And then I used a greeting from the Colossal Coneflowers stamp set that comes in the Autumn Splendor kit. I have a couple other videos coming up soon featuring the Colossal Coneflower stamp set and some two-step stamping techniques featuring the layered leaf prints. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll give today's technique a try. The new kit is now available at GinaKDesigns.com. Here are a couple other videos I think you might enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.